Who was Philip VI and why should we care about his reign? Well, the enigma that is Philip VI, often referred to as Philip the Fortunate or the Catholic, was the first king from the House of Valois. His reign over France, spanning from 1328 to 1350, was anything but ordinary. Marked by a succession dispute, his time on the throne ignited what would become known as the Hundred Years' War. But the challenges didn't stop there. The Black Death, one of the most devastating pandemics in human history, also swept across his kingdom, further destabilizing France. Yet, amidst such turmoil, Philip VI made strategic moves, such as purchasing the province of Dauphine in 1349, setting the stage for future political maneuvers. Now, let's delve into the life of this fascinating figure, starting from his early years. Philip VI, also known as Philip the Fortunate or the Catholic, was not born a king. Born in the year 1309, Philip was the first king from the House of Valois, a royal house that would go on to rule France for over two centuries. He was the son of Charles of Valois, a man of considerable influence and prestige, who was a direct descendant of King Louis IX. However, Philip's journey to the throne was far from straightforward. His father Charles, despite his royal lineage, was not in direct line for the French throne. It was Philip's cousin Charles IV who sat on the throne. But when Charles IV died without a male heir in 1328, a crisis of succession arose. The throne of France, according to Salic law, could only be passed down to male heirs. This left the kingdom in a state of uncertainty. Meanwhile, the political landscape of France was undergoing significant changes. The Capetian dynasty, which had ruled France for over 300 years, was coming to an end. The kingdom was rife with internal strife, and the threat of external invasions was looming large. In these turbulent times, Philip's upbringing and education were heavily influenced by the need for strong leadership and a firm hand at the helm. Philip emerged as a key contender for the throne, thanks to his father's influence and his own marriage to Joan the Lame, the niece of Charles IV. The assembly of nobles, faced with the lack of a direct male heir, made a historic decision. They chose Philip as the next king, bypassing the female line and setting a precedent that would be followed in French history for centuries to come. Yet this decision was not taken lightly. There were many who opposed Philip's ascension, including Edward III of England, who claimed the throne through his mother, a French princess. This dispute over the throne would eventually ignite the spark of the Hundred Years' War. His ascension to the throne was not without controversy, marking the beginning of a contentious reign. Philip's journey to the throne was far from typical. Born into the House of Valois, his path to royalty was not a straight line, it was a twisted route, marked by the death of the previous king, a succession dispute, and a controversial law known as the Salic Law. The death of King Charles IV in early 1328, without a male heir, was the catalyst that set Philip's ascension into motion. Charles's closest male relatives were his nephews, the sons of his deceased older brother. However, questions arose about their legitimacy, casting a shadow over their claim to the throne. In the midst of this uncertainty, Philip's claim to the throne emerged. He was the grandson of Philip III through his mother, making him the closest male relative to the king outside of the direct line. His claim was backed by a group of French nobles who were unwilling to see the crown pass to Charles VI's daughter or nephews. The ensuing succession dispute led to the application of the Salic Law, an ancient Frankish law that prohibited women from inheriting land. This law was controversially invoked to exclude women from the line of succession to the French throne, effectively barring Charles IV's daughter and paving the way for Philip's ascension. However, this decision was not without its consequences. It sparked a bitter rivalry with England, whose king, Edward III, was also a potential claimant to the French throne through his mother, a sister of the deceased French king. This rivalry ultimately led to the start of the Hundred Years' War, a conflict that would dominate Philip's reign and shape the destiny of both nations for generations to come. With the crown now on his head, Philip VI faced a reign fraught with challenges and conflict. As we shall see, his ascension to power was just the beginning of a journey filled with battles, political maneuvers, and a devastating plague that would test his strength and resolve as a king. Philip VI's reign wasn't all about France. He played a significant role in the Scottish War of Independence too. Philip VI found himself embroiled in the Scottish War of Independence due to the complex web of alliances and rivalries that defined European politics in the 14th century. 
This war was not just a domestic dispute, but a chessboard where larger powers like France and England played out their own conflicts. Philip's involvement was primarily through the old alliance between Scotland and France. This strategic partnership was designed to counterbalance the mighty England, and it saw Philip supporting Scotland's cause for independence. It was a clear example of the saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. His support wasn't merely in words. France, under Philip's rule, provided Scottish forces with military aid, including troops and resources. This support was instrumental in bolstering Scotland's resistance against English pressure, and it added an additional layer of complexity to the conflict. Philip's strategies during this war were a blend of military tactics and political maneuvering. He understood that a strong Scotland served as a useful distraction for England, keeping them preoccupied to the north, and hence, less focused on their continental ambitions. This, in turn, allowed Philip to solidify his own position in France and pursue his objectives without the full force of English opposition. However, Philip's involvement in the Scottish War of Independence was not without its repercussions. It strained relations with England, contributing to the tensions that would eventually ignite the Hundred Years' War. Yet it's undeniable that his involvement in Scotland had a significant impact on the course of the war, helping to keep the flame of Scottish independence alive. Philip's role in the Scottish War of Independence was a testament to his strategic prowess and political acumen. Philip VI's reign was a tumultuous period in French history. Indeed, his rule was marked by events that would shape the trajectory of France for centuries to come. One of the most significant events during his reign was the commencement of the Hundred Years' War in 1337. This was not just a war, but a dynastic conflict that would span over generations. This war was sparked by a dispute over the rightful succession to the French crown, bringing England and France head-to-head -head in a struggle that would last well beyond Philip's lifetime. Then came the Battle of Slees in 1340, a naval confrontation which resulted in a crushing defeat for Philip's navy. This defeat not only marked a shift in power on the high seas, but also dealt a significant blow to the morale of the French. But the trials of Philip's reign did not end there. The Black Death, that infamous plague, made its devastating debut in Europe during his rule. The disease destabilized France, creating social and economic upheaval that further complicated Philip's reign. Yet, amidst these challenges, Philip VI made important strides that left a lasting legacy. In 1349 he purchased the province of Dauphine, a strategic move that would later bear fruit for the House of Valois. He entrusted the government of this region to his grandson Charles, ensuring the continuity of his lineage in the corridors of power. Philip VI's reign came to an end with his death in 1350, and he was succeeded by his son John II. Despite the myriad challenges his reign faced, the war, the plague, the internal strife, Philip VI navigated through it all, leaving behind a legacy that would shape the future of France. Despite the trials and tribulations, Philip VI left an indelible mark on French history. His reign was a testament to the resilience and determination of a king in the face of adversity. His legacy, marked by both triumphs and tribulations, would continue to resonate in the annals of French history long after his death. Philip VI's reign was a significant period in history, marked by war, disease, and political upheaval. Known as Philip the Fortunate, or the Catholic, he was the first king from the House of Valois, and his ascension to the throne sparked a succession dispute that ignited the Hundred Years' War. His strategic mind was notably exercised during the Scottish War of Independence, where he played a pivotal role. Despite facing a crushing naval defeat at the Battle of Slies and the devastating Black Death, Philip VI's resilience never waned. His reign was further characterized by the acquisition of the province of Dauphine, a strategic move that demonstrated his foresight. Entrusting its government to his grandson Charles, he ensured the continuity of his legacy. Philip VI, a king remembered for his strategic mind, his resilience in the face of adversity, and his notable influence on French history.